It ends as it began. Most final polls putting Obama and Romney neck and neck, a few putting him, uh, Obama, ahead. But it is the electoral college votes that the two candidates need. 538 votes are up for grabs in 50 states across the country. Obama and Romney need a majority that is 270 to win the White House. Now, only a handful of these votes are realistically still in play in seven crucial swing states. Which way these go will decide the election. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Rugman, is following the Romney campaign and has this report from New England. He's been pilloried as rich and aloof, accused of failing to connect. But as Mitt Romney voted in Massachusetts this morning, the polls suggested he has just about held his own and might yet prove his critics wrong. Who did you vote for? Very good. Very good. Who did you vote for? <laughs> Romney is 65 now. Anne, his wife of 39 years, is a constant on this, his second and surely final White House campaign. The Mormon multimillionaire has already broken the mould of presidential politics in a race he knows could be won or lost in Ohio, America's bellwether battleground state. Mitt Romney has now left this polling station and gone straight back out to the key swing state of Ohio. He's pinning his hope of election on his promise to turn around America's economy. But consider this, unemployment in Ohio is now below the national average. And if enough Americans feel that things are getting better, albeit slowly, they may decide to stick with the devil they know rather than the one they don't. Mr Romney only scheduled this last minute trip to Ohio yesterday. The Democrats said they had no such plans, that the Republicans were panicking. But look at this, a rival jet taxiing on the same tarmac in Cleveland this morning. None other than Air Force Two, with Vice President Joe Biden aboard. As if four years of electioneering weren't enough, both sides are now enlisting election day itself. Romney's neighbours know he won't win in famously liberal Massachusetts, but they claim his time as governor here provides the best clue as to how he'd run America itself. I think that's what we need in this country. I think we need both parties to work together. I wish we didn't have the parties. I wish it was just everybody working together as one. That's what we need, and I think that's what Mitt Romney's going to try to do. In New Hampshire last night, thousands queued round the block for Romney's final rally, despite the bitter cold. The Granite State holds only four Electoral College votes, but every vote counts if the race is close. Inside, a rock and roll band warmed the crowd as midnight and polling day approached. Mitt Romney's final event on the stump was a frenzied affair, and frenzied it had to be with Barack Obama ahead in three out of four of the latest local polls. I need your vote. I need your help. Walk with me. Walk together. Tomorrow we begin a new tomorrow. God bless you. This morning, a senior Romney advisor predicted what he called a decisive victory. Whatever the truth, the longest and most expensive election in history is almost over. Though America is bracing for another long night of vote counting ahead. Jonathan Rugman, Channel 4 News, New Hampshire.